Hi, this is Carl Bissonette with another episode of Tips and Tricks. We have a couple different things that we're going to go through today uh, with you. Uh, this video should be a little bit of a, a shorter video, um, but I think some good stuff to kind of consider as we're moving into the, the 4th of July holiday season. Um, a little prep work can make both our lives and our horses' lives a lot easier. Um, this horse here is a new horse that came into training. Um, I have about a week with him. Uh, he is um, previously has been a wild horse, and um, the owners are looking to, to get him broke to ride and uh, be able to do some of that ranch stuff with him. So we'll kind of follow his progress and see uh, how things go for him this summer. Uh, he's about somewhere between three and four is our best guess. Um, he's been uh, really smart uh, to kind of be working with. I've been super excited to kind of see uh, what's happening, um, but he is about as fresh and, and green as they come. Um, you know, just even working on being able to touch him and kind of pet him out. He's curious and kind and, and sweet, um, but he is about as fresh of a start as, as we got. So um, we'll be going through the progress of him uh, along with Caesars training this summer. I'm really excited to kind of give you all kind of the spectrum of different training from wherever these horses are at and kind of whatever um, things might happen. So as far as today goes, uh, he might not be 100% perfect and that's okay. I'll, if he makes mistakes, we'll kind of explain those through the process, but we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, another thing to mention as we're getting started, um, I previously did a video uh, with m m using the neck rope on the training, and I had a few friends that um, wanted some neck rope, so I ended up making up some extra ones. Um, $15. Uh, if you find me on Facebook, message me on Facebook. If you want to get one yourself, we can work on getting you set up with one of those as well so again fifteen dollars for those neck ropes and we'll get you squared away so today with this guy what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on getting him whip broke um the reason why I kind of bring this one up with uh, coming into a month prior before 4th of July, um, I hear so many horse people say, you know, the fireworks scared my horses and they went running through fences and this and that. And for the life of me, um, I haven't had too many issues with fireworks or gun shooting with my horses. Um, but I think a major part of that is I always whip break my horses. Uh, I get them used to that. Um, and then those loud noises aren't that big of a deal. Also, for those of you that are interested in the mounted shooting, um, before I go to the shooting part, I always start with the whip breaking and it makes that transition a lot easier and uh, saves on ammo in that process as well. So this is just a, a great one to set your horse up before that 4th of July fireworks come out. If you can spend some time doing this, uh, I, I do believe uh, this can really help that horse, set that horse up for success. Um, so a little bit of the philosophy behind it. Um, when we are training horses, we are either sensitizing them or we're desensitizing them. And both are very important in the, in the training process. Sensitizing is the idea that if I do a light cue, I, I want that horse to respond or to move away from it. Um, I want my horse to be very sensitive to my rein pressure and to my spur pressure. As uh, soon as I apply the slightest bit of pressure, I want them to move away from it. Desensitizing is getting that horse so that they aren't freaking out or they're not moving um, to whatever the applied pressure is. Uh, so again, both is, is equally important. Um, and the only difference really in sensitizing a horse versus desensitizing a horse is 
when we're sensitizing a horse, we want to re release the cue when the horse speeds up or starts moving. When we're desensitizing a horse, we want to stop the cue once the horse has slowed down. And hopefully today you're going to see that. Um, I did round pin them uh, a little bit just to kind of knock off the edge. Um, that way y'all didn't have to watch me do, you know, 20, 30 circles. Um, but we're going to do a few circles uh, before we get started uh, with the whip as well. Um, so in the process of, of whip breaking and getting him exposed and getting him used to this, uh, you'll also uh, see me keeping in mind, keeping in consideration uh, his round pinning as well. So with that, let's get started. As far as my round pinning goes, um, one thing that I think is really important is this direct hand. I want to give that horse a cue and give that horse a direction. If I drop this hand, now he went the wrong way there, so we're going to push him. He has to turn into the circle there. We'll leave him alone, push that hand out, and get him going again. I was listening to Clinton Anderson, uh, and he was saying, you know, horses are a creature of habit. Don't let them do it the wrong way. Um, whether it be round pinning, whether it be our stops, whether it be in the saddle, um, if they make that mistake, fix it. Try it again until they do it correctly. Don't stop until they do it correctly. So I drop this hand. Oh, very nice. He's starting to pay attention to it. He came into the inside of the circle and we'll send him back out. Now that last go around, he went into the lope before I asked him to go into the lope. I like keeping him here at a trot personally until I ask him to lope, but he is also, again, Kind of young, very brand new to all of this. So he's he's learning all of this in the process. There we go. Now, I want to get a little bit of breath out of him. I want him to want to be slowing down before I start introducing the crack of this whip. So essentially, once we start cracking the whip, I'm going to stop cracking the whip once he slows down, preferably into a trot, but if we're only able to get a slow down in the lope, that's okay too. We'll just see where he's at. There, much better. See if he'll trot off here and hold the trot. <clears throat> one thing you'll see and as i get better with him you know i see a lot of people when they're round pinning a horse they're making these big circles and they're really pushing this horse and they're working really hard in the process okay personally i believe in setting this up so we really shouldn't be traveling too much if we have to fix them and make them correct, that's fine. But I want to try to make this circle as small as I can. I don't want to overwork myself. We want the horse working. There we go. All right. So now I have my lope. All right, here we go. I'm going to start cracking the whip. I'm not going to stop cracking the whip until he slows down. Right there, he slowed down, so we stopped. 
This is desensitizing. Mentally, what this is doing for this horse is when something's scary, we're teaching him he has to slow down and think. And even better, if he comes to me, that's just the win on top of the win. So he's like, hey, that was really scary. But I know if I come to you, then hopefully you'll set the situation up so it's not too scary. All right, let's go try this other side. Very nice. The biggest thing when you start this with your horse is you have to be determined to keep on cracking that whip until the horse slows down. If you stop while that horse is speeding up, you're teaching that horse to go faster when the whip starts cracking, to run from that fear, okay? We don't want that. We want him to slow down when something's scary. Here we go. Very nice. Again, this guy, he's uh, really impressed me with how smart he is. So this would be my level one as far as whip breaking a horse. We're going to try one other deal with him just because he did so dang good right there for you all. We'll see if we can get to what I would consider level two on the, the whip breaking. So now, I'm going to start my whip cracking at a trot, if you'll let me. And then uh, I want to stop my whip when my direction hand stops. Very nice. Very impressive. Licking those lips, a good sign that we're accepting it and that we're getting it figured out. Let's try this other direction. He's smart. He hasn't had a lot of work on a lot of handle, but he is smart. Hasn't taken him too long. These lazy horses, they're the, the best ones for training because they are so motivated by just doing nothing. Yeah, I want to keep them trotting a little bit until I drop my direction hand right there. There we go. Very nice. Very, very nice. Very good. Again, um, spending a little bit of time with this, with your horses, before the 4th of July season comes in, before those fireworks start happening, it really truly can set your horses up uh, to where that's not a traumatic event. Um, when they hear something loud and scary, they start thinking and they stop moving their feet instead of running off. It's, I do it with my dogs, I do it with my horses. Uh, I wish you guys could see my, my trained horses in the field right now. They're, they've been eating grass the whole entire time we've been cracking the whip. And it's just a testament of um, doing that homework, doing that work beforehand. I don't know how many pet owners I, I hear, they get so frustrated with the fireworks. But if we, instead of taking that frustration, fireworks are going to happen, plain and simple. If you live in town and if you're on the outskirts of town, it's going to happen. So instead of getting frustrated by the inevitable, by what's going to happen, Spend that time training the animal so that they're not afraid of it. 
And then even more so as you move down the road, if you're out uh, trail riding and a gunshot goes off, you're more likely to have that horse stay under you instead of running off and, and getting terrified and spooked. Um, this guy, he did a great job being a, an example of the process. He, again, he absolutely impresses me how fast he does learn. That motivation to want to relax and take it easy is strong, but that's what will help him learn in that process. And he's starting to realize, oh, when the whip starts cracking, that's when I get a stop and rest. And that's when we're going to make that tool just super powerful. Uh, very impressed with how he handled that. So again, that's Carl Bissonette. There's another episode of tips and tricks on what I do to whip break my horses and get them ready for uh, fireworks. Thank you for watching.